In today's episode of the podcast, I'm sharing with you my final thoughts on the Mexican blanket as I have just recently finished it. And I'm doing this in a format that I like to call three likes and a wish. So if that sounds like just your cozy cup of tea, get comfy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. For today's video, I am catching you up on my finished Mexican blanket. This is a pattern by Alexandra Tavell, and I'm really excited to share with you some final thoughts I have now that the project is finished. And I know a lot of you have been like, where has this been? Where has, where have your knitting projects been? Well, I've been working on them. Thank you very much. Wait. And one of them is right here, and I'm really excited to share this with you. Now, I um, and many of you might know this, but I am a former teacher. So um, long ago, prior to my oldest son being born, so he's nine going on 10, um, I was a fourth grade teacher. And then I, I, I was a teacher for about nine years. And during that time, you kind of learn all of these different ways of sharing with uh, teaching your kids how to share their work with other kids, and then also teaching your students how to respond to work. Um, that the other kids have done when they're presenting their work. And one of the things that we would teach kids is when you respond um, to, to be constructive, right? And when you respond, provide some things that you really liked and then some things that maybe you wished were different or questions that you had constructive criticism, right? You're just trying to kind of teach that. Well, I thought it would kind of be fun to use that same technique when it comes to doing a little bit of a final thoughts review on this particular pattern. And in school, we called this, um, it depended on the teacher, but we called it three loves and a wish or three likes and a wish. They said uh, two or three things, it really just depends, two or three things that they liked and one thing that they wished would be different. And so that's kind of what we're going to do today. Now, um, I've done my little notes over here. I've done, it may end up being like three likes and two wishes or four likes and a wish or whatever. It will always just kind of be that format because I wanna share with you what I really loved about this pattern, but I also really want you to walk away having some ideas of ways that when you do this, should you decide to knit this pattern, you could do it a little bit differently based on my constructive review. I think you get it. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, first things first, let's take a look at this bad boy, okay? It's big and, well, I mean, it's not like huge. It's a it's a throw blanket. There's no way I'm going to be able to show you all of it. I mean, really? I don't, maybe I can. Let's see. I can't really tell what I'm showing you right now. There. Okay. Hold on. There we go. Look at how beautiful this is, you guys. How gorgeous is this whole overall design? I mean, it is so cozy. And then here's the back side. How cool is this? I mean, other than you might be able to see where I wove in my ends, um, it's really cool looking on the back side as well. Such an awesome blanket. I'll get you a little closer to certain details, but just so you know, you know, like size. <sighs> we're getting we're getting real cozy. This is let's move the chair out of the way. It's really just illustrate how cozy this guy is. How cozy is this? Okay, so if you're using it as like, if you're using it as just like a lap blanket, it's very generous. You could fit two people under this maybe, but it's really a nice, generous, single person blanket, you know, over the lap if you're getting cozy on the couch or something like that. Okay, I'm bringing it back over. Let's make sure my, look how pretty that looks. Just, right, okay. Coming back. So yes, this is my Mexican blanket by Alexandra Tavell. I'm obsessed. Now you may have noticed I've been posting a little bit about this here and there um, that I've been you know, getting cozy with it. I've finished, it's been finished for about a week now, maybe a little bit more than that. It doesn't matter, but I absolutely love this blanket. There are some things I would do differently next time around, and there will be a next time, spoiler alert, um, but I really am happy with this. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, uh, really quick, I want to show you close up a couple of things. So here's what it looks like on the back. You can see what is even my camera trying to focus on my spinning wheel. Okay. So here it is on the back. How pretty is that? This here is where you pick up stitches to add the border. And I think that looks so cool. Doesn't that look really pretty? Yeah. You can see kind of how the borders come together in the corner kind of rustic looking. I really love it. I have a video over on the Patreon where I show you how I went about weaving in my ends here. Just if you're curious about how I do that, I talk a little bit about why I do it the way I do it. Um, 
with bulky yarn, it is a little bit more visible because it's just bigger yarns. So you can kind of see where they've been woven in and some of the little ends are starting to poke out as they do. And that's usually just because of pulling on the fabric as you're using it, it's gonna cause some of those ends to squirrel out. It gives you a little bit of an idea of how much extra to include, but those eventually get kind of woven in and, and felted in there. Even though this is a washable yarn and it's not necessarily going to felt, it does get kind of fuzzy. Um, in there and holds on really nicely. I have washed this. So I washed it in the washing machine and I laid it out to block initially. I don't know if I would lay it out to dry every time. It is able to be dried in the dryer. However, I just, I don't want it to lose, I don't know. The only reason why I might be more inclined and you know what, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that for when we get to the yarn review section because I wanna talk a little bit about what I knit this with, okay? So you have an idea of what are some what some options are out there because the yarn I use is much more budget friendly. But I wanna go ahead and start by getting into the things I really liked about this pattern and things that I think you are really gonna like about it as well. I feel like it needs to be around me, not around around me, but like in the shot, right? Like it needs to be present for the review. It's like taking your kid to a parent-teacher conference. They need to be present while you speak about them. Okay, so we got my notes. First thing I loved about this pattern was the overall motif. I love the mix of the, essentially the color work section and the stripes. I like the placement of all of that. You'll see a picture here to kind of give you an indication of where the color work section is um, relative to the stripes. I love that the stripes are varying thicknesses or weights. If they were all kind of the same, I just don't think it would have the same appeal visually. I really love that. This motif is just so cool looking. Now, another thing, and this is kind of in the same vein, this is mosaic knitting. If you're not familiar with mosaic knitting, I tell you, you need to look into it. It is fabulous, especially two colors like this. It is just the easiest thing. I do um, a walkthrough. I actually demo the technique over on Patreon so you can kind of get a glimpse of what it is. If you're interested in mosaic knitting at all, definitely look further into it because it is so much fun to do. This was just an absolute dream. And what's great about it is because you're doing this, um, in that format, mosaic knitting. It's not like stranded color work. You don't have floats along the back of your work because you're only ever knitting with one color at a time across a row. So the weight of the fabric doesn't double. It just stays nice and even in the same thickness as the rest of the fa uh, yeah the as the rest of the fabric on the blanket because you don't have those floats. It's really it's really so dreamy. If you've never done mosaic knitting and you are interested in this blanket, this is a great place to do your first mosaic knitting. It was mine and I'm obsessed. I absolutely love it. And this particular pattern has both charted and written instructions for the entire thing. Well, it's charted for the, no, actually the whole thing is charted and written out. Yeah, everything. So it's got a visual chart, like a, a colored chart, color-coded chart, and then it also has a written section as well. So you could follow it just by the written instructions or you could use the chart depending on what works for you. And that's another reason I really love this. Also, it's Alexandra Tavell. She's known for using bulky weight yarns with blankets like this. I love that it's a super bulky because it absolutely flies off the needles, but because you're knitting it to a little bit of a more, I wouldn't say this is a tight gauge, but it's not as open of a gauge, is it feels like, I don't know, it feels more substantial. It doesn't feel like you're gonna poke your toes through it. It feels substantial. It flies off the needles. It didn't, in the grand scheme of things, it really didn't take me that long to complete. Um, we went out of town for a little under a week and I didn't take it with me to do it during that time. So I kind of lost some time with that. But other than that, it really worked up quickly and you kind of uh, want to compulsively knit it. It's very potato chippy. You just want to keep going one more row, one more row. And I absolutely love it. I just, I just really love this blanket. Another thing I love about this is the size. It's not too big, it's not too small. Like I said, it's enough for one person to have a nice generous throw blanket to cozy up with on the couch or on a chair or something like that. If you have little ones that wanna climb under it with you, they can. Mine don't really like it, they say it's fuzzy, but they say that about things that are made with yarn, you know, what can you do? But I really do love the size. Of course you can make it bigger. I don't think the pattern comes 
with instructions on making it any bigger than this. This is just the size. And I don't know what my dimensions are. I didn't measure it, to be honest, to tell you if it's m much bigger. Um, but in my opinion, it's the ideal size for a generous one person throw blanket. So those are the things I really love about this. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about something I wish I had considered or done differently. Um, if, if I were to do this again, these are things that I would do differently, or this is a thing I would do differently. I would just make sure to go up a needle size when I do the mosaic knitting section. Now this, so this has nothing to do with the pattern. I think the pattern was great. I wouldn't really change anything about the pattern to be completely honest with you. The only thing I would do differently is to make sure that I go up a needle size for this section here, because I did notice that the fabric kind of moves in like this on those sections. And honestly, I should have known that. I know that that's something that happens with color work knitting, and it definitely did happen here. My knitting was just more tight um, in this area. So I would just go up a needle size or, I mean, another thing you can do is just be sure to knit considerably looser in this area, but I wouldn't want to impact anything too much. I mean, another suggestion would be to go down a needle size for the stockinette sec uh, sections that are just striped. But I think that overall the best suggestion would be to when you get to this mosaic knitting motif is to go up a needle size just to avoid or mitigate any issues of it narrowing out in that section. You do put a border around it and I think that does a pretty good job of making everything seem pretty even but I did notice that I had to kind of more aggressively block it along the sides to help make up for the fact that it does pull in a little bit in that area. So that would be what I would suggest. If you plan on knitting this, just make sure you have one size up in your needle um, to knit these motif areas here, just to open it up. If you tend to be a tighter color work knitter like I am, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, and you can kind of see as you go, if you're going to need to do that by doing a couple rows and then looking and seeing what's happening, um, you probably don't even have to get that far. You'll notice that it starts to pucker or it just seems to be a little tighter right away. So yeah, just go up a needle size and make sure that you don't have any issues with it narrowing in the color work section. Okay, now I definitely wanna to talk to you a little bit about the yarn that I used here because I mean, look at these gorgeous colors. These colors inspired an entire fiber for the people shop update because I think they're absolutely stunning. All of this yarn was purchased at Joanne Fabrics a while ago. It's been in my stash for a while, so I just kind of plucked it out of my stash for this project. And I'm using a combination here. Okay, you know what? You're gonna have to be off screen. You're, you're warming me up. I used a combo. I used, this is by Joanne. It's Knit and Crochet. This is what it looks like. And it is an 80% acrylic, 20% alpaca blend. It's considered a super bulky. However, it's lighter than your classic Lion Brand Thick and Quick, which is another yarn that I used for the yellow stripe. This is the only Thick and Quick I used in the whole project, just so I could get that really pretty yellow stripe. Um, if you remember me talking about this in the beginning, I had originally only intended on using uh, the rust, this like blue color and the taupe and the green. Those are the only colors I was going to use for this project until I realized that it just needed something else to add a little bit of a bump up in brightness. And that's where the mustard yellow came in. And I'm so happy that I did because it really adds that extra something that I feel like the blanket needs. And you know, you know how I love mustard, right? It's just, it's a thing. Okay. So these are the yarns that I used. Now, I love these yarns. These are great budget friendly, super bulky yarns. They are, like I said, an 80% acrylic, 20% wool, 20% alpaca. I have had people ask, what percentage of a yarn does a fiber need to be in order to lend the overall yarn the characteristics of that fiber? I'm going to do a video on this, okay? Because this is really kind of fascinating. I will tell you, however, that for wool and alpaca or fleece, you know, fibers, 20% is on the very low end of that. So you can, it's almost like you can get away with 20% of that fiber in the overall yarn and benefit a little bit from the characteristics of that fiber. So 
For example, wool is warm. It's uh, very resilient. It has a little bit of elasticity or actually a lot of bit of elasticity. Those characteristics will be present in the yarn at 20% of the total makeup of the yarn. That's very much on the low end, but you will be able to benefit from those characteristics. Alpaca is very similar. 20% is on the low end. Ideally, it's 30 to 50% to really benefit from that fiber but in this case 20% is good enough to get some of those really great characteristics from the alpaca and the wool. But it is a fantastic budget-friendly yarn. You can get this, especially on sale, for sometimes close to five bucks a ball. And if you're really on a budget, maybe you're knitting a gift or you want it to be washable, this is a fantastic option. The only thing that I notice being an issue is with this yarn here, it sheds like nobody's business. I like even right now, you can't really tell because I'm not wearing super dark colors, but if I'm wearing dark colors and I'm cozying up with this blanket, it does shed on me. It's very easy to dust it off, it's no big deal, but it absolutely does shed. So if you don't like a shedding fiber, um, I would avoid this yarn here because it sheds. Now you could knit this whole blanket using Lion Brand Thick and Quick and have a great time and it would be a gorgeous blanket. I think you would definitely need to adjust your needle size for that motif section because this is a, a more dense and an overall thicker yarn than this one as super bulky, but you could absolutely get away with it and it would be gorgeous. So that's my only real critique in terms of the yarn. I love the yarn, but it does shed. So something to keep in mind. There you have it. That is my three likes. I think it was four likes and a wish review of the Mexican blanket by Alexandra Tavell. I love this blanket. I highly recommend it. It is not going to be my only Mexican blanket. I do plan on knitting another one and I can't wait because I absolutely enjoyed this. Let me know if you have knit this blanket down in the comments and what your experience was and let us know if there's any other similar patterns that you would suggest folks check out and I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys, and I will see you in the next episode of the podcast. My family and I, we are traveling to Massachusetts for the remainder of this week and Monday of next week, but we will be back, and I will be back with fun new content for you then. You guys, until I see you again, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.